Just say no. But I love being unconscious. Very well. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Deadbolt Dragons in Memoriam. Today we'll be covering the man, the myth, the legend, especially for UK fans and for his lesser known roles in the deleted scenes of Harry Potter. We'll be covering Rick Mail, also known as Filthy Rich from Filthy Rich and Claptrap, Rick from The Young Ones, and Richie Rich from Bottom. <laughs> So, Rick Mail, The Young Ones, Bottom, Filthy Rich and Claptrap, the f deleted scenes of Harry Potter, this man is multifaceted, he has done it all in comedy, he is fantastic. And sadly, last year, we lost him. It was a very tough day, I remember that day, and I was like, I couldn't believe it. One of my comedy heroes had bitten the dust. And he wasn't the only one that the, that year. He wasn't the only one last year who fell off the radar due to death. A lot of people got taken from us last year and I'm by no means saying he was more important than any of them. I'm just saying he was more prevalent for me because of how much I enjoyed Bottom how much I enjoyed the young ones and how much I enjoyed all of Rick Mail's work. How almost admiring I was of the fact that take this old, well, relatively older guy who likes acting immature and childish and just have this all around charm to him like Rick Mail had. Of course, as we all have pretty much figured out that since Rick had his quad bike accident many years ago, he was never the same. Um, him and Aid Edmondson started to drift apart for quite a while, and the while still very close friends, they never really had the partnership that they used to have. Look at that. That is brilliant artwork. That's from the Weapons Grade Y Fronts tour. And that pretty much um, encapsulated the Eddie Ritchie relationship in Bottom. Their friendship, although they brought about sometimes that they actually hated each other, was brilliant. And It was just mega slapstick humour and Rick was almost the master of slapstick, dumbed down violence humour. And he proved that with every comedy that he has ever been in. There was a very small, bottom-like reunion uh, at a talent show that I think that Aid Edmondson was in, like sometime last year or the year before where he was playing the dying swan Rick comes out at the end and starts battering A. Edmondson with a frying pan and everything and says look just die will you and then batters him one more time and basically acts in all richy fashion and at one point there was planned to be a bottom season three or four it's just Aid Edmondson backed out and it never got off the ground. And But that's what Rick was really aiming for. But to Aid, it just wasn't the same. And that was a shame. Now, don't get me wrong. As a Bottom fan, as an Aid Edmondson fan, as a Rick Mail fan, 
I will never ever blame Aid Edmondson for not wanting to talk about Rick so much after he died because they were close like brothers and it's very painful for Aid to have to go through and to explain to news reporters or talk about it on the internet or whatever. I mean, the man just wants time to grieve and yeah, in many ways, some people just don't give him the opportunity, but he should be allowed this time. One day he will talk about everything with Rick, but for now the pain is just too close. And for that we should all give aid our condolences and then give him as much privacy as he needs, because it affected him worse than all of Rick's fans, than all of the Young Ones fan base, than all of the bottom fan base, it affected Aid the most without getting into Rick's actual family. Of the people that weren't family, Aid Edmondson was affected the most and for that I think he should be given a lot of time to deal with it and to grieve and nobody should bother him about it. It does get annoying sometimes when all I see is some interviewers trying to talk to him about it when he's clearly not ready to talk about it. So hats off to Aid Edmondson for trying to deal with this as best he can and I will never bother you. I'd like to think that most of your fans will never bother you about it and I wish you all the best in future because I know this has hit you very, very hard. A couple of years ago on my original channel on YouTube, which I use for personal reasons, personal browsing and favoriting nowadays, I once did a Botchamania ending, a sort of Botchamania ending for Matthew and his wrestling series. And I used audio from the bottom stage show because it was perfect at the time because I had this clip of CM Punk whose gimmick at the time was just say no to drugs and everything and he said just say no on television and I thought that was perfect you could say that that was a very very early concept of a dub smash but I'm not I'm never going to take a uh, I'm never going to take um, credit for that, but my idea was that CM Punk laid Jeff Hardy out with the go to sleep after saying just say no and it was edited perfectly and a lot of Americans didn't get it, I, I get that, but to me it was very very funny, I try and link you to the video, but um, yeah, I'll I'll try and do that at the end of this video. As you saw at the top of this video, um, Rick is very, very easy to try and impersonate. And I can't help myself sometimes being a major bottom fan and a major young ones fan. I can't help but try and imitate him. And that was one of my favorite scenes of, um, it's the, it's uh, the scene that I used for the Botchamania ending that I, aforementioned in this video and you know um, that's something I will always remember from the bottom stage shows of course the other thing I'll always remember from the bottom stage shows is when Rick broke the fourth wall by talking to the door and that made me howl out with laughter about as much as the rest of the tour did but that will always be one of the moments during the tour that I actually remember for all time and it's always in the back of my mind if I ever need to bring it up I bring it up and it's just one of those things that made me admire the man the fact, about the fact that he was being a slapstick idiot on television when he was getting on a bit in age and everything but he just didn't care. He liked to stir things up. He liked to get the attention any way he could. And he did that. 
he did that by being outrageous. And I'm trying to say that in a Rick voice. This is just outrageous. You know, that's not my best Rick Mail impression, but you know, I have so much fun trying to impersonate him that I could not not say it in front of the camera for you guys. These days, the spirit of Rick Mail is still kept alive. Or basically, as Rick would put it himself, if he could make jokes about it, he'd say, you're keeping me on life support. And he is being kept alive on YouTube by the YouTube poopers by the name of Joey Snowy and Bristles. And it's great to see that no matter what Rick Mail's in, it will never get old. It will never get old because it is so funny and he left a massive mark on all of us. And he was very, very entertaining and funny. And if I ever want to repeat one of his jokes just for a laugh, I'll do so and try and do it in his voice. Of course, living in England, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Rick Mail's failed World Cup song. Seriously, how that didn't get to number one after his death, I will never know. Most recently, my fiance actually got to go see a comedy show with Alexi Sale from The Young Ones. Um, and he, want, he actually said a joke in tribute to Rick and made it very funny. He basically said he used a joke about being the one who cut the brakes on the quad bike. And he says that he's not allowed to tell that joke anymore. And I think Rick would have been okay with that if he was if he was still alive. I think he'd be okay with that joke being told because during the bottom shows, he actually told a joke about the quad bike as well and called himself a twat and, you know, just some madness that Rick Mail was involved in. In closing, I'd like to say that Rick Mail's legacy in comedy will be remembered forever, whether it's Drop Dead Fred, The Young Ones, Guest Helps Paradise, so Bottom, the stage shows in this Ultimate Collection right here. He will be remembered forever. He will be remembered for the deleted scenes of Harry Potter that he starred in and never actually made it to the friggin' film. He will be remembered for those as well. He will be remembered for his failed World Cup song. He will be remembered for his partnership with Aid Edmondson. And he will be remembered, period, for being an upstanding family man. As much as he portrays an immature old man, he is a consummate family man. And me and all his fans will remember him forever. So... Rest in peace, Rick Mail. You made us all laugh until your last breath. And we are extremely proud of you. As a Worcestershire boy, knowing that you went to school in this county, I am extremely proud of you. And I hope that you are in a better place. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you did, if you liked it more than that, leave a subscribe. If you didn't like it, dislike it, and then unsubscribe from me because I'm doing such a horrible job. Thank you so much, and I'll see you for Woofy's Rants, episode two.